Hello, my name is Jay, and welcome back to my Tech Vault. And today we're going to talk about graphics cards. In particular, graphics cards that are gaming and non-gaming. We're going to answer that age-old question, what is actually better for gaming? So, first off, this video is not centered around that. Rather, it's just going to explain kind of the differences, why one is extremely more expensive than the other. I don't care if that's proper English, it's truth. And um, basically what we're going to do is go over why these suckers um, versus this guy are quite a big difference. So first off, let's talk about the biggest, I guess, fish out in the sea, is that why does this card cost, I think this cost me 10 bucks or 20 bucks at a yard sale, I think it's like maybe 100 on eBay, and this guy, which costs 200, and no one's gonna really have it at a yard sale. Um, why do they cost the same, uh, um, well, why do they perform, why does this perform so much better than this, even though it costs more? So I'm going, we're gonna take a deep dive into NVIDIA's uh, marketing on this sucker. So this supposedly, I believe, has four gigabytes of RAM, uh, VRAM, sorry. I believe it's GDR5. And NVIDIA markets this as a card for professionals. Now, I don't know what you consider me. I do YouTube as a hobby with a 1080 Ti as my graphics card or workstation graphics card of choice. But I would say that the, the card of workstation users um, is quite a, um, what's the right word? scam. Now I'm, I'm not hating on NVIDIA, there are, I have 1080 Ti as I said, but you can clearly see that with a card that is marketed as, you know, with 4 gigabytes of RAM for $200, it's kind of an interesting uh, proposition and kind of only gets the workstation people with a big budget that have a lot of money to spend on a workstation that really don't know the specs they're getting. Now you would ask, well what does NVIDIA market these cards as having? Well, they say that these cards have more security. So, for example, if someone got a hold of your graphics card, you know, while you're doing important information, and they were, you know, took up a couple wires, it'd be pretty difficult for them to find out any information. I would figure if someone has physical access to your system already, you're probably in more trouble than that. So, next up, they market things as error correction. Now, if you're unfamiliar, ECC memory, um, I believe, uh, error correction memory. Um, basically corrects, and I'm talking about RAM here, uh, corrects for mistakes um, that may pop up in the data. Now, the same thing goes for here. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that there are some tasks that use graphics cards that really, uh, especially with the parallel processing of a graphics card, that really can't mess up, um, and that data is, you know, spends a lot of time, or takes a lot of time to render it and calculate that data. So, for example, it would be a very good thing to have something that corrects any of those errors so it doesn't crash your whole thing and you lose all that data. But then again, is that really worth an extra $200 to $300 premium for the low-end cards and up to a four dollars or $5,000 premium compared to a 2080 Ti? Is that really worth it? So if you want to take a look at a RTX, I believe, 6000, which is the uh, AMD's uh, common or not AMD's, what am I talking about? NVIDIA's Common Sense uh, top tier Quadro. Uh, there is a RTX 8000, but that is supposed to have like 48 gigs of RAM on it. Uh, no one needs that, and there's no really applicable use for that. But an RTX 2080 Ti and an RTX 6000, which is a Quadro, both perform about the same, and this is common knowledge on user benchmark online. So really the Ending result is that these cards pretty much cost the same, but you are paying, I believe, four thousand dollars for one and only a thousand for the other one, a uh, thousand for the gaming card. You really got to ask yourself: Are you going to want to pay uh, a premium just for obviously a little slightly bit more VRAM? But are you really want to pay a premium for the workstation class cards? When in reality, they will just perform about the same in most rendering tasks, except you're saving yourself a little bit of money on. Uh, I guess error correction, but is that error correction really worth $4,000? So the next question I ask is what performs better in gaming? Well if you can't tell by so far in this video, gaming is something that really doesn't need error correction. If your game crashes, we've all had that, but if you have a pretty solid system with not too many issues in your drivers and a pretty well built system, you're not going to have too many crashes. If Usually the crashes will be related to driver, not really your hardware. I would say we all can relate there. So why spend an extremely large amount of money to buy a Quadra SLI system when you could get a uh, 2080 Ti uh, SLI system or NVLink system? So why spend that extra money? Well, in reality, there really is none. So 
let's go over some of the reasons why the workstation cards would be important because there are multiple reasons as well. I'm not just trash talking, but for the majority, I'd say 98%, there is literally no benefit. So as I said, we already mentioned that people that need uh, high value calculations uh, that really can't risk data being wrong. Now, NVIDIA likes to market this as, as, that, as the error correction will prevent, uh, like for doctors or something, if they're scanning something, uh, scanning somebody and they're looking for a tumor, it will prevent you know, bad data from showing up and saying someone has a tumor in their head. I, I, it seems, from my you know, limited point of view, Seems like that would be what would not happen. I think it might be a bad pixel here or there. I don't think we're going to have something that bad messed up. Now, for that odd case that no one wants to risk it, yeah, go with a Quadro. Next up is the expensive, uh, large amount of video memory that is equipped in some of these cards. So, as I said, we already mentioned the RTX 6000, which is a Quadro with ray tracing, equivalent to the 2080 Ti and gaming performance that costs, I think, $2,000, $3,000 more. And the, the step up to that would just be the same kind of processor, uh, graphics processor, and just a bunch of more video memory. So some of the calculations of advanced rendering of people, especially the health industry, they have uh, the need for a large amount of video memory so that they can render like large uh, you know, full body scans, things like that, so they can get a full view. And all that video memory gets used up. And that's probably one of the very few applications. Now, obviously, I'm not, I'm not an expert in every field, and I don't have any clue about the countless uh, options and stuff that could be used. But basically, it's similar tasks like that, where the large amount of video memory is needed and not necessarily the processing performance of the physical GPU. Now, the physical GPU is relatively performs the same as the um, RTX 2080 Ti, same with the workstations, but of course you're paying for more video memory. A driver support, which is also something that they include, is that a lot of the um, professional software, for example, Adobe Autodesk, um, just the long list of any professional software you can think of, uh, puts out certifications, and those certifications include certain sets of hardware that are will work with the um, software. So a lot of the time, NVIDIA uh, will make partnerships with companies to go through and uh, you know support their... AMD does this too, I would assume. Um, AMD does partnerships and uh, deals with companies so that they support their workstation cards uh, a little bit more than they support their gaming cards. Well, why? Because you want to you know, sell more game, or expensive, uh, in my opinion, overpriced cards. Um, so in summary, really the things that you should keep in mind is that a Quadro... In some applications, definitely is useful and is uh, a good idea. In other applications, especially for people that are doing video editing, me, um, really don't need a large amount of video memory um, or really just don't want to spend a huge sum of money, uh, your gaming cards will be quite um, quite a good job, especially because AMD's Radeon Vegas um, did really good as well. Uh, they're actually really good for video memory or video editing, especially with like 16 gigs of memory. It's absolutely insane. So really what it comes down to is what you're willing to spend. And honestly, spending a large amount of money for something that is, you can get somewhere else for pretty much a lot less uh, doesn't sound like me. But you guys do whatever you want with your money. Hopefully this video was able to help you out in some way. As always, check out the channel for other cool tech-related news, reviews, builds, etc. And as always, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.